Hello everyone and welcome back to my Efficient Design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24. In the previous episode I sent out a superlander over to Jewel and of course the superlander is supposed to be able to land on two locations. It has a lot of uh, Delta V available and so we're hoping that that will get us lots and lots of science so we can unlock particularly the ion engine is what I'm uh, curious about now because I haven't used it very much. But while while that is on its way, we are going to be getting into into the correct location for a Duna transfer, and let's just time warp into that. So you'll see as we uh, let the days pass, it looks like we're going to reach Duna transfer time first. So we're going to launch a mission towards Duna. It'll be the same. It'll be a super lander with uh, the OVX since the OVX did a very good job with that last time. Gotta do something with asteroids. I'll, uh, I'll think about that. Uh, unfortunately there, are, there aren't any asteroid contracts, at least I haven't seen any. Does that look like 45 degrees to you? That's what I'm looking for between uh, Kerbin and Duna. It looks less than 45, uh, more than 45 degrees. Uh, that's that's about 45 degrees. Okay, so we're going to launch that mission first, and then we're going to uh, do the mid-course plane change for uh, this lander. Uh, let me quickly peek and see who we had in, in the dual mission. Ah, uh, yes, it was Lem Kerman. So Lem Kerman is in the dual mission, and uh, he's got got uh, some fuel left. I hope it's going to be enough for Lem to land on one of the smaller moons of Jewel at least uh, and then return. <laughs> that's the tricky part, the and then return bit. That's uh, that's gonna be fun. We've got a lot of contracts for for him to possibly... We've got a land on Bop. We could do a land on Bop. That looks like the most lucrative thing since we're going to get the contract fulfilled as well as get the science. So maybe uh, Lem will be aiming for Bop. Alright. Uh, so now let's turn to the VAB and then launch the mission to Duna. So just in case you missed it in the previous episode or it's just been uh, you know a few days and all that, uh, it is a double lander so it has two sets of landing struts. Actually all together it has three. Uh, actually it's a triple lander the, since the, the launch stage also lands itself. This is the launch stage with the four skippers and then the one LV T45 in the center. Uh, which which I think worked all right, right? <laughs> I have to try and remember how the status of all these things. I hope it was okay. Anyway, uh, so we've got that going for us, and and yeah. So the plan with this will hopefully be to land on land on Duna, and then also land on Ike. That should be tricky. Doing that with the same system. Uh, we're going to, of course, be dumping this can and this engine is going to be dumped, and this stage is also going to be dumped. So it's not a perfectly reusable system, but uh, it's uh, well, it's better than some alternatives. All right, so uh, who are we going to send? This has got to be a tough mission. I don't remember using Calrod Kerman, have I? Okay, Calrod Kerman, uh, relatively high courage, relatively low stupidity, sounds good to me. All right. So, Calron is going to be launched to Duna. Okay, I've insisted on a daylight launch. Try to give me a nighttime launch. Alright, Calron. Uh, well, you've got uh, sort of an easier time of it than the Jewel mission with Lem. Maybe a harder job of it because you're landing at two locations. We'll see. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't done a, a serious rescue mission uh, in this series yet, uh, except for the ones that are pre-planned from the mission control. So you, you never know, one of these might turn out to be a rescue mission. We'll see. Alright, so uh, Calrod is ready to go, he's smiling, so let's get going. Okay, clean lift off. Okay, center engine cut out. Burning at apoapsis for orbit. OK, 
Okay, uh, 70 by 85 is okay. We should have plenty of fuel to spare in the launch stage. Let me actually turn off the center engine so it doesn't make that sound. And uh, yes, uh, Calrod Kerman can be decoupled from the launch stage and uh, we will bring the launch stage back down and then proceed with Calrod's mission. Off Calrod goes. Switching back to launch stage, we have plenty of fuel for a descent. And let's plan for that. Let's I really wish I would take notes on my descent paths. I do that for oh, this is the wrong way around. I do that for uh, space shuttle testing, which I I'm still trying to create a new version of my space shuttle, uh, real solar system space shuttle, uh, so that I can land it at Cape Canaveral. But that's practically the only time I've actually uh, taken notes on descent paths. And of course that's a lot trickier to land it on, on location, so. Okay, uh, so 27 kilometers over the, the peninsula there. I wish they'd give official names to all the geographic features. I guess people do create their own names and that's okay, but, uh, you know, just so that, uh, we could all refer to the stuff by the same name. Oh, I think I overdid it. Darn it. I think maybe my initial burn would have been about right. Okay, no, I think I can correct this. We've sort of been skirting the upper, upper atmosphere here. Hopefully we're going to cross onto the continent at a, a good location. We'll see. I might now be overshooting, which would be par for the course. I was trying to get a little bit further north because we were heading south, but now I can't retro burn properly. Okay, well that's the rest of our fuel. We're going to find out whether this thing can ditch into the ocean properly or whether it's going to fall apart. It's a big thing, obviously. This time we have no fuel in order to cushion the landing. So that makes it even more interesting. Okay, so I vowed to do some homework after this. Uh, since I think this, this launcher is going to be something we'll reuse. I mean, not, not just reuse. I mean, uh, something that we're going to be relying upon for the future of this space program. Uh, I'm going to do testing to make sure we can bring it down. So I'll see what its, what its actual optimal trajectories are based on various different orbits and stuff like that. So I'll do actual testing, take notes on it, and so we'll be able to get uh, much closer to KSC than, well, than this obviously. So I've got homework to do. I think it's the weekend. Okay, parachute deployment brings us to 7.6. Uh, it's probably got to be a tough impact. Here we go. Ah. Oh, it's going to flop. It's going to flop. Mm. Oh, okay, good. So my, my supposition that making it this wide would uh, allow it to float better seems to be working. The only thing we really lost uh, were the landing struts. All the engines are still on board. And it does float. Uh, it didn't uh, flop into the water harshly. Okay, that's excellent, actually. Uh, I'll take that. So we'll just call this a splashdown test of the of the OVX, and it worked out pretty well. We got 75,000 funds back, and that's pretty good. 90% uh, of the total value. So 
about as good as we could expect. Now let's continue with the Duna mission. The first thing I'm going to do is rename this because the other one, the mission head for Jewel is named the same. So I'm just, just going to call this Duna Hike mission. Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to plot Calrod's course. Okay, I've plotted it for 66 uh, kilometers there. And so that's an excellent uh, encounter and we can do it without a mid-course plane change. So that's pretty good for Calrod. And actually, uh, it's interesting because we're at the ascending node and the descent, well, we're close to the ascending node and the descending node was over there. But instead of trying to correct the inclination, I actually uh, increased the inclination in order to shove the descending node into the encounter area and thereby reduce the distance to the encounter. So instead of actually correcting the inclination, I increased it in order to get the encounter closer. Sort of an interesting way to go if you haven't tried that before. So it's always good to actually have the encounter at the node. That might help more than actually correcting the inclination. Okay, here we go. Getting close to the end of the burn. We are on escape. Uh, we're ending up with the fast transfer. I, I don't really want that. I wanted the one that occurs right here. Uh, hmm. I've got to replot. Okay, I've got back the points, but it's going to cost me quite a lot. I'll take it, though. Looks like uh, doing the burn at the incorrect point really cost me. Okay, that's a good uh, Duna approach. All right, so let's uh, go to a tracking station to, well, let's get this out into interplanetary space first, and then we'll go to a tracking station to make sure that we know which one has to be dealt with first. Okay, let's get you pointed prograde because that's the right way to go. How much field we have left in this? Only a little bit. Made for a correction burn once we reach Duna. We're definitely got an aero break at Duna. Okay, interplanetary space for Calrod Kerman. And let's turn to the tracking station. Okay, so the Jewel mission is going to need its maneuver correction in 30 days, whereas Calrod is going to end up at Duna in 58 days, so definitely this mission first. Okay, I think it's uh, good. Let's go, Lem. Okay, that's the minimum. Let's see if I can plot something that gets us even closer. We are going to need to air break at Jewel. Okay, well, 6,000 is a little bit too close to the jewel. Uh, 165 sounds okay. That sounds safe to me. Let us do this minor correction. Oh, we're on a crash course. I don't really like that. Well, uh, it's an approximately crash course, I suppose. But let's give jewel some respect here. Okay, so that's settled, uh, but it's going to arrive in 287 days. Lem has got quite a long trip ahead of him, and that means we're going to do everything at Jewel first. Not Jewel, uh, Duna first, so let's turn back to the Duna mission. Wait, 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 wait. It uh, suddenly occurred to me that I had abandoned Tom Doss Kerman on the moon. <laughs> I had forgotten that I hadn't completed my my mission on the moon. Tom Duskerman has to be brought back from the moon to Kerbin. This is important. He has science on board. Fortunately, all systems are good for that. We've got uh, stored data. 
EVA report, surface sample. Uh, do we? Uh, I guess we don't. I mean, we're gonna keep that stuff, obviously. Um, any more science to do? I'm sure we have more scientific instruments, but we might have transmitted everything. Oh well, uh, some more available. Gravioli, keep that. Okay, so we had transmitted data, but we can still get more data by keeping this stuff. All right, uh, Tom Doss is clearly inside. Um, well, let's not uh, make him wait any longer than he has to. Let us... Let me just make sure what the fuel situation really is. Okay, yes, let us go. Gear up. Head 90. Uh, so many missions, so little time. The reason I forgot about Tom Oscar is because uh, we didn't have his contract displayed, right? I mean, I didn't see any contract to do anything on the moon, so I just, uh, I've gotten in the habit in the new version of career mode to just check the contract to see what I have to do next. And we had already fulfilled all the contracts with Tom Doss, so this contract didn't uh, pop up. And I forgot we had to bring him back. Oh, no, 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 I remember now. I was going to leave him on there for a little while to get more science. Ah, darn. Okay, see. <sighs> shall we, uh, shall we uh, maybe land him at a different location? Let's get him into orbit first. But maybe it's... I don't know. We don't have a flag planted here, do we? Another shady location. Yeah, let's get him into orbit first and see he's on the nighttime side. So yeah, there aren't any new moon contracts to do, so I'm just going to have to find a place to land him. I think this, this area looks interesting. I've kept the orbit down. Let's try and land here. Okay. So got all that fuel there. Should be alright. Oh, uh, this tank has been draining. That's not right. Looks like my fuel management, my plumbing is a little bit off. Those drained exactly as planned, but this one is draining at the same rate as this one. That's interesting. Did not anticipate that. How about the outboard ones? Oh, well that's uh, empty. These, these are full, okay. Tough landing we've got here, Tom Doss. A little bit dark, very narrow area, lots of little craters around. We want to land around here, I think. Now fly over this rim and then, uh, then we can kill horizontal velocity. What does your altimeter tell you? Okay... That's 2,500. All right. We're looking at uh, 700 meters then. Pretty harsh landscape. Okay, there we go. Tom Doss has landed. I'm gonna take the liberty of shifting as much fuel up as possible. Uh, actually, no, stop that. We'll do that after we take off, because otherwise I'm afraid it'll tip over, because then we'll have all the mass on the top. Okay, well, we're on a new location, and unfortunately I've, I've kept the data from the old location, so we'll just have... 
Yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll do. We'll keep that data. Um, Tom Doss. Uh, let's. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, let's get the EV report up here. Keep that data. Board. Now I want to retract solar panels so that your ladder will work. And we will extend ladder. Good. Now. Oh, uh, actually do the crew report. Okay, now let's get on with it. Oh, backflip. Okay. A little bit dark around here. Don't stray too far away from the lights. And take surface sample. Twin craters. Okay. Keep that data. EV report. Dust getting everywhere. Plant a flag. Okay. Tom Doss at Twin Craters. Second landing. I think I'll go home now. Indeed, we need to focus on our interplanetary missions, I think. So I'm just going to be satisfied with this and we can continue. Come on. Ah, uh, Tom Doss. If you're going to land on a uneven surface like this, you're going to have to be able to EVA pack up there. Okay, we can retract the ladder. Uh, seems a shame not to do any of this other data from here, but I'm going to keep the data from the previous location. Uh, yeah, we would have to overwrite it. Better to do it this way, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with this. Alright, so let's get him back home. As we do this, gotta pump the fuel up. Okay. I should actually do that now. Okay, and double check that all the stuff in here is done. Okay. We gotta decouple this. Now it's just this little guy. And let's see, what is our apoapsis? Okay, well, uh, let's just keep burning. Uh, maybe at 30. Now we do have delta V in here, so we can try to get into orbit around Kerbin first. I think 35 will be a safe bet for that. I mean, not orbit. I mean, we're already in orbit. I mean, it's tighter orbit. Okay. Okay, here we go. Curb and return burn. So we have discovered one problem with this system, and that's with the fuel flow. So for both the Jewel mission and the Duna mission, that's going to be important to monitor. Okay, we're on Kerbin approach. And retract solar panels, please. Don't know if I did that at the right timing. Retract solar panels. Okay. Point retrograde, which is traditional. Our inclination is a little bit off, but we can actually correct that. We've got uh, delta V to spare.
Uh, okay, well, the the arrow breaking was safe, but our our orbital inclination is horrible. I'm going to try and correct that now. Okay, as we bring the orbit in and get around, that will probably land closer to KSC. Let's see. Well, that's definitely going to land somewhere. Okay. I think we're going to need to retroburn more than that, though. We've got our apoapsis here, out of all things. And I'm just going to retroburn as much as possible, I think. Oh, well, actually, we've got more delta V than you'd think. But. Yeah, let me just burn it all. Okay. Boy, when are we going to actually hit some atmosphere here? Come on. Seems like my day for overshoots. Okay, parachutes deployed. 5.2 meters per second is our our speed after deployment. Okay, safe splashdown. And let's recover. Oop, come on, recover. Alright, uh, so science that uh, Tomas brought back instead of transmitting of course he transmitted some other stuff but uh, 463 altogether and uh, there you have it from both the twin craters and the northwest crater to landing locations 95.4% uh, of total value of the of the lander returned and that amounted to about 22,000 funds pretty expensive lander because of the scientific instruments remember the gravioli and all that stuff seismometer and all uh, cost quite a lot and of course uh, Tom Doss uh, was brought back and we got some reputation for that amazingly enough okay so uh, with that uh, let's let's take a peek at the tech tree I think we now have enough to unlock the ion engines as planned so I'm going to do that and what else this probe core is interesting Clampatron Jr. could be possible for some smaller sized missions, rover parts. Uh, I'll deal with all this later. Let's go to the Duna mission.